Okay, nerds, listen up. I'm Sensei Lawrence. All the superheroes were busy this week, so you get me instead, which is better because you don't have to look at some dude in spandex tights, so you're welcome. Now, some of you may know my story, at least those of you who don't live in a cave or under a rock. Netflix can catch you up to speed if you do, but basically, I was the poster boy for a totally bad at- well, I forgot. This is a seminary. I have to watch my language, I guess. Ugh, well, uh, where, okay, where was I? Yeah, I was the All-Valley Karate Champ representing a dojo called Cobra Kai. We were the best. Our instructor, Sensei Kreese, taught us all sorts of macho alpha male stuff, and we ate it up because we were teenage boys in the 80s, a.k.a. the greatest decade in human history. One of the lessons Kreese hammered into our heads every class was no mercy. Mercy is for the weak. Showing mercy would get you kicked off the team and possibly assaulted by a grown man in the parking lot of a major karate tournament. Well, that philosophy was all well and good until this skinny little punk from Jersey and his old Okinawan Jedi master showed up and beat our whole team after literally only a month of waxing cars and playing with chopsticks. Johnny, come Come on. You know that's not what Miyagi-Do training really is. Quiet, LaRusso. This is my lecture. So anyway, class, it was humiliating. I'm not going to lie. But after that fight, I realized that pretty much everything Kreese had taught us was total bullsh... Uh, baloney. Now, it would be years before LaRusso and I could even stand to be in the same room without wanting to kick each other in the head. But I never forgot the look on Kreese's face that night Mr. Miyagi showed him mercy. I realized right then and there that mercy is definitely not for the weak. But I could have learned this a lot sooner if I'd ever bothered to crack open my Bible. There's tons of stuff about mercy in there, but a lot of times we miss it because the Hebrew word doesn't have an exact English equivalent, so it gets translated a bunch of different ways that aren't nearly as bad, I mean, as insightful. So we can easily miss how often mercy pops up in the Bible if we don't know what words to look for. So we gotta look at the Hebrew. Yeah, I bet you didn't know old Johnny knows biblical Hebrew, huh? Well, that's what you get for stereotyping. I may not know how to work a computer or a smartphone, but that doesn't mean I'm illiterate. So one of the most prominent words for mercy in the Hebrew Bible is this word, chesed. Say it, class, chesed. You gotta pronounce it like you're trying to hock up a big loogie to spit on some nerd who just disrespected you at a beach party in front of Allie and all her friends. Oh man, Allie. What a babe. I had such a thing for her back in the day. Be honest, if you're a dude over 40 watching this, you did too. <sighs> Where was I? Oh yeah, chesed. It doesn't have a single English equivalent, so sometimes it's translated with the totally lame-sounding words like kindness, steadfast love, loving kindness, etc. But most of the time, in the Septuagint, it's translated with the Greek word eleos, mercy. And far from being for the weak, it's actually a foundational characteristic of the big man himself. Think back to when God appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai after the Exodus. Moses asks if he can see God's face. God says he can't see his face, but he can see his back. And when he passes by, he lets Moses know exactly what type of God he is. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in chesed and faithfulness, maintaining chesed to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he doesn't leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. That's Exodus 34, 6 through 7. And both times in that passage, chesed usually gets translated as love in many modern Bibles. But it's way more than hearts and puppy dogs. Remember, Israel had just broken the covenant and worshipped a golden cow while Moses was on that fiery mountain above them getting the rest of the covenant laws. God threatens to wipe them all out, but Moses falls on his face and begs for God to show them mercy. And God does. Then, in this passage, he lets Moses know that while he is a God who punishes rebellion and sin, in comparison to his punishment, his chesed is thousands of times greater. And keep in mind, this is the same God who just a few months before destroyed the army of the most powerful empire in human history at the time. How metal is that? And in Moses' power ballad response, probably played with the ancient Near East equivalent of a sweet guitar solo, he says, In your chesed, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. See that, nerds? Chesed is strength, not weakness. We know that because of the parallelism in Hebrew poetry. Even in the Bible, though, some people don't see it that way. They want God to show them chesed, but they resent when he shows it to others. There's a whole book of the Bible named after one of these guys. Remember Jonah? Why was he in the fish? Because he'd rather drown in the sea than go preach to Nineveh. And why is that? Because he was scared of the big bad Assyrians? That's how it got told to me as a kid, but that's totally wrong. Jonah straight up says why he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Look at Jonah chapter 3 verse 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. But to Jonah, this seemed very wrong and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord, 
Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious, compassionate God, slow to anger, and abounding in chesed, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it's better for me to die than to live. Man, Jonah would have been right at home in Cobra Kai. He didn't want the Ninevites to receive mercy, chesed. He wanted them to burn. They had bullied his people and many others, so he was hoping they'd get a God-sized fiery crane kick to the collective face once and for all. But God had other plans. The God of Jonah is the God of Moses, the God whose foundational attitude is one of chesed. And because he is full of chesed, he expects his people likewise to mirror this chesed in the world. Kittle puts it this way, On the part of a superior, chesed also includes grace. This is particularly so on God's part. God has freely bound himself to his people, and the righteous may thus depend on his chesed as they themselves show mercy. And that's another important thing to know, nerds. Chesed is more than just not giving someone the throat punch they deserve. It's actively doing good for them and actively showing them kindness in tangible ways. It's an action, not just a feeling. In fact, the article on chesed in the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament says it more eloquently and seminary-like. Three elements constitutive of the chesed concept. It is active, social, and enduring. Chesed always designates not just a human attitude, but also the act that emerges from this attitude. Attitude. It is an act that preserves or promotes life. It is the intervention on behalf of someone suffering misfortune or distress. It is demonstration of friendship or piety. It pursues what is good and not what is evil. So this is why all those words like love, steadfast love, loyalty, devotion, kindness, and loving kindness are used to translate chesed in our modern Bibles. It's all of those things and more. But as my friend Ben Witherington argues in his recent biblical theology, chesed most often seems to mean exactly what the Septuagint suggested, compassion or mercy, which are qualities needed by those who have failed, sinned, or are in dire circumstances and need help. And this is good news for a screw-up like me. My former Cobra Kai teammate turned preacher, Bobby, has been trying to get me to see all this over these past few years. And it's something I think even our buddy Tommy learned before they finally put him in that body bag. Despite Kreese's brainwashing when we were kids, they finally realized what I've come to realize as well. Chesed is the opposite of weakness, class. Proverbs 20.28 says, Chesed and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through chesed, his throne is made secure. Does that sound weak to you? Proverbs 21.21, Whoever pursues righteousness and chesed finds life, prosperity, and honor. Yeah, since I Christ talked about honor, but his warped mind had no idea that honor comes through mercy, not beating people up. That's what Hosea said. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no chesed, no knowledge of God in the land. There's only cursing, lying, and murder, stealing, and adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Mercy is everything, nerds. We've been shown more mercy by God than we can ever hope to show others. Jesus told a whole parable about this to make it clear that not showing mercy will result in mercy not being shown to us on judgment day. If you don't believe me, go read it for yourself, Matthew chapter 18. Now, if you know me, you know I've been known to brag from time to time, but what I've learned the older I get is it's not the bragging that's wrong. It's what we're bragging about that matters. Jeremiah said it. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom or the strong boast of their strength or the rich boast of their riches, but let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who does chesed, justice, and and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. When it's all said and done, chesed is the thing God desires most to see reflected in his people. He says through Hosea, for I desire chesed, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. You see that, nerds? Nothing we can give to God is more valuable than us doing chesed. And not just doing it, but loving to do it. Like Micah says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love chesed and to walk humbly with your God. So forget all that fake macho alpha nonsense about mercy being for the weak, unless you're ready to stand up and call the king of the universe a beta. No, nerds. Mercy, chesed, is one of the strongest weapons you'll ever wield. Class dismissed. If you like this video, use your dweeby computer knowledge to subscribe to this channel and tell your geek friends about it. There are lots of other sessions by actual nerdy spandex-wearing superheroes on a whole bunch of other rad stuff here, so go check those out too.